different way. Turn your Bibles to John chapter 17. I'm just going to read this for before I get on to what I really want to talk about. John chapter 17, verse 3. And this is eternal life. What is eternal life? And this is eternal life. It means to know, which means to perceive, recognize, and become acquainted with and understand you. Understand God. The only true and real God, and likewise to know him. Jesus says, the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. Uh, some versions kind of give that as, as our, our job. Is, is Basically, it says, our job is to get to know him. That's our job. You want to know what your destiny is? Get to know God. That's your first assignment. Get to know God and everything else will flow out of that. If you try to skip that and go around it and think you're going to find your destiny or what you're supposed to do or who you're supposed to be or all of that kind of stuff, and you don't know him, you are lost. You can create something, you'll end up being some avatar out there of something, but it won't be the real you. So our whole job is to get to know him. That's a big job. That's a big job. And this is eternal life. It means to know, to perceive, like you have a perception of God that's correct. Recognize, become acquainted with, and understand you. The only true and real God. And likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. So that's our job. Our job is to, to get to know him. And are you working on that? On a daily process? And um, sometimes... You get to know a person, you know, especially if you really like that person out of the gates. It's like things about their life, you retain them. And it's like, oh, did you know their favorite color was red? Especially if it's a guy thinks a girl's pretty or the opposite, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, and they like this and their favorite food is. And, and we retain that kind of information. And that really is the surface information. That's not the depth of who they are. Uh, spend some time with them, you're going to start finding out the depth. And... In, in us learning to love each other, we learn each other's weaknesses and each other's strengths. When we come to know God, there are no weaknesses. Isn't that jazzy? Try to wrap your head around that. Like, we're going to get to know him. We're going to get acquainted with him. I want to be acquainted. Like, I don't really know you very well, but now I know you sing. Right? I don't know your middle name. So I can learn a lot of facts about him, but to know his character is a different thing. To know how he loves is a different thing. To know where his boundaries are, that's a whole different level of relationship, isn't it? He wants us to get that acquainted with him. So we tend to, here in lovely America, uh, I think more so than in other places, we are surface people. That's how we stay safe. That's what popular looks like. We're like, oh, here's all my people. You know, we use terms like that. You're my peeps and all this kind of stuff. Well, what's his name? I have no idea, but he's part of that group. You know, and, and we're surfacey people. We, it's really difficult for us to say, count um, more than one hand of people that were like, I have deep relationship. Like, I am so acquainted with them. I get to know them. And, you know, it's like, and, and you're right in front of me. And we have that time that we can spend together, but how acquainted am I really with you, Tiger? How, acquainted, how well do I really know? I don't know his favorite color. You know, so, so it's, it's one of those things where he wants us to come be on surface with God to get to know him. And you know what it does when you do that? The more it's not surface knowing God, like I go to the first Catholic Church of the Baptist Supreme whatever, you know, you have all these names of, of, of churches. We go beyond that, and it's like, well, I don't care what church I attend, I know him. Oh, man, I know him. And, and when, that, when that's there, and we get to know him like that, it causes us to know and want to know people, people in a deeper way. The less we know him, the less I care about you. Think about it. Think about it. You know, no, no, before I knew Christ, I really loved people. Did you? God is love. So without him, you can't truly love. 
And, and what many times we do, how, you know, maybe we give people things, maybe we're kind to, but if you really check your heart, a lot of that was for your own gain. True love is you, you're not looking to gain anything. You're just loving them because they're there. And they're created in God's image. And they're a person too. Average person has a hard time with that. There's an expectation, just like at Christmas when you're a little kid. I gave you a gift. How come you didn't give me a gift? That's how we love. I was nice to you, so you should be nice to me. That's how we love. That's part of uh, what keeps us so surfacy is that part that many times we'll be in church for 12 years, let's say, and we'll be like, so by now I should have learned to love. If you got to know him, if you just went to church for 12 years, that doesn't mean you know him. The more you know him, the more you'll be able to emanate him from you. See that? Here's the thing though, if, I, if I'm going to get to know you, and that means, you know, I got to get in your presence. Like, we got to hang out. Like, I can be in your presence. See, I'm in his presence right here, right now, right? But it's a whole lot different the closer I get. I'm in his presence. You can already feel, right? The bubble's getting smaller. <laughs> now I'm in his zone. I'm like in his circle, right? I'm up close and personal. And, and God wants us to not have a bubble with him. But many times we do. Well, and we'll feel his presence start pushing in on us and we get that same squirrely feeling. It's like, okay, well, all right, I don't know. Uh, you know, it's like, okay, back it off. Shut the guy off on stage. Whatever it is we got to do. There's a feeling that comes. Um, a lot of times I used to check out a church, you know, when I, when I first came to know Christ. I, I mean, I, I still got areas I'm so jacked. But there, there, are, there were so many areas that were jacked. I, when I got close to God, when I started to feel his presence, I could feel those areas. And then it'd be like, oh, I'm out. Sometimes I'd get up right halfway during the sermon and just, and I always sat in the first, second row, I'd just walk out the door. Because I'm I like, I can do what I can do. No, I can't. And I'd be out. And, and no one was yelling at me. No one was pushing me around or whatever. The pastor wasn't like pointing his finger like I'm doing at you right now. I just, there was something there that said, I got to get out. I don't know you. That's really what I'm saying. Yeah, but you prayed the prayer of salvation. You came to the front and everything, and you prayed the prayer of salvation, and, and you accepted him. So you shouldn't feel uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't know him. That's what was happening to me. And so I had to begin to trust and let go of that, that fear that was there that said somehow... Somehow people, are, he's going to find out how bad I am. Or I'm going to be inadequate in some way. Or what if none of this is actually true? And what if what I'm feeling is, I don't know. And, and it would just start, your brain would start swimming and I got out. Anybody had that happen to you? Ever. Come on now, come on now. Yeah. Yeah, you, you know that feeling. So then when you've had that happen to you, and, and maybe, you know, me leaving the church or whatever, that quit after a while. Ah. <sighs> And I found out, like, I'm getting to know him. Until he would take the relationship to a higher level. All of a sudden, like, okay, I don't know you. <laughs> I know this, but I don't know that. And it would do similar things within my heart all over again. Uncomfortable. Just like, ah. Oh. I remember thinking, why do you have to be in the Bible so much? And why do, I don't know, nah, 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 nah. if I'm going to get to know him, why does it have to be that? And you'd have all this, like, wrestling match with him. Instead of just relaxing and getting to know him. When we're hurt in relationships, especially as we're growing up, it doesn't come automatic for us to trust God. Yeah. He's the highest authority. He's, uh, you know, the big kahuna, right? So that makes it, that makes it more like, whoa, that's, that's, that's kind of a tough zone to be in. But, if we can just get the principle, here, here's the funky part about the gospel. It's good news, right? But when our problems get all technical, we think the solvent is all technical. 
we'll be like, okay, so we're going to have to figure out what demon this is and how God is going, and maybe I did this. And we'll lay up and uh, awake all night trying to figure out the intricacies of why we're being beat up in this way and why our heart is in such turmoil. And really, there's simple solvents. Get to know him. Now, that can't fix this. This is way bigger than that. It's way bigger than getting to know him. But if you just stop everything that you're wrestling with and say, God, I need to know you. I need to know you more. Ah, I, I need time with you. I, I need to just let you love on me. Just sit here and worship you and let it do whatever it does. I can't control this. But see, the thing is getting to know a person, if you're afraid to the level of your insecurity is a level you'll need to take control. So if I want to get to know you and I'm insecure, we'll start out like, yeah, <laughs> laughing, we'll have this good time, and all of a sudden, we're getting closer, and then it's like, I'm going to somehow need to take control of this, because I don't know where Eugene's going with this, and I'm not going to get hurt, and if he requires me to, then I'm going to, and we start taking control and setting up all kinds of rules. That's just what we do. Um, and then what, what, it, what it says inside somehow is in the midst of that, I'm working so hard to protect myself, I'm the better friend as we're getting to know each other because i got to work so hard at keeping on top of this thing. So we get this kind of cocky feeling inside that says, I'm the better friend. And if you're not careful as I'm getting to know him, I will judge him. Because now I've raised up in order to control this relationship so I don't get hurt, I've come up above you. So I can't look you eye to eye, I have to look down at you. Kind of like we're postured right now. Oh yeah, me and Eugene, we're friends down there. You know, he's, he's down, as long as he stays down there, don't, don't rise up. Because I have to stay in control of this situation. See? So we do this all the time with people because we've been hurt. So why do we think we're not going to try that one with God? We do. We bust a move like that. We're like, no, we're not. God's different. He's different. I love him. I mean, he's just there. Blood of Jesus, all this stuff, you know. And we have a terms, you know, that we throw out. A lot of full gospel terms are out there. You sling them around or whatever. Um, but at the same time, we'll get in an analytical state when we start to not trust. When he starts moving in on us and we're supposed to be drawing nigh to him and he's drawing nigh to us, all of a sudden we get that funky feeling again. It's like, I don't know you. So, I'm feeling insecure about this. So, to the level of my insecurity, I'm going to need to take control. So, God, uh, you know, we don't tell God this. We're like, well, I don't see where we have to go to church every weekend. And I really think I can do it this way and this and that. And all of a sudden, we're coming up with all these rules. We're doing the same thing that I had going on with me and Eugene. It really, we've taken God, who is God, and we're like, uh, you're safer if you're down here. And I'm in control. And then that way I can get to know you, how I want to get to know you, when I want to get to know you, you just stay down here. Yeah. Scary. Yeah. When all of a sudden we lift him up. Now let's go back to praise and worship. What's the point of praise and worship? If we lift Jesus up, he will draw all men and women unto him. Right? Right? So you get a body of believers. Really, that's not like, okay, so we're going to go, Jesus, we lift you up. And that's just going to cause evangelism to take place. And boom, the place is going to back out. No, what it's saying is to the level of our insecurity, we're not going to take control. We're going to give him all the control and bow down. Now, the Spirit of God can move in a way that it's never moved before in this place. We have to let go of control. Now, I had somebody say, that just sounds cultish. You know, you're letting control of everything and anyone can take over your brain and just come into your mind and take over. And it's like, that's not, that's not what I'm saying. If you want to get to know him and he is the higher power, he is ultimate love, there's no flaw in him, then he should be here and we should be the ones down. Yeah? Yeah? We're looking up to his authority, up to his power, up to his deliverance, up to his pureness, up to his holiness. It's perfect. And it's absolute love. 
That's what we're doing. That's worship. Um, so a lot of times we'll start out with, with praise and worship, you know, uh, as we're a new Christian. Usually we're looking around at other people like, that's weird. <laughs> See her raising her hand? I don't know what that's all about. You know, and then we start to learn the raising hand and the shout and maybe the stomping of the feet and the moving and, and that kind of stuff. Um, and then we start getting a little comfortable with that. Yeah, I'm starting to get to know him. This is this all right. I guess I can get in the praise and worship zone. And as we're worshiping him in spirit of truth, the, the spirit of the Lord will begin to move on the place. And the atmosphere changes. So if you go to church and everybody's singing, like I was raised, and I'm, I'm, I'm not picking, down a, a, picking on a, a certain denomination. It's just how it went down in my church. Let's talk about it. And, I, and I've said this before. So this isn't new, but... You know, God have mercy upon us. And the congregation, Lord have mercy upon us. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Uh, I don't know. You're not going to feel that thick atmosphere of the anointing. Now, if you pay attention, close attention, it's just like if you're sitting and you're talking to somebody, you know, and we're, we're trying, Deb and I are trying to get to really know each other. We're like, hey, hi, Deb, what's going on? And you have that conversation. That's like the first praise and worship song. And then if we start talking a little bit deeper, it's moving in deeper. Next thing, she's sharing her heart and I'm sharing mine. It's like, well, that's a deep conversation. If you pay attention, good praise and worship will romance you into the presence. You're a part of it. They're a part of it. If they're just performing like, man, it's a cool group. Man, I liked it. That was good. What kind of relationship is that? So that's not going to build that, that, that moving from one thing to the next in a deeper way. And when we worship in spirit and truth, it'll be just like that. It'll be like, yeah, God, I'm excited about you. Then all of a sudden, he starts working on your heart. Sometimes tears are coming down your face. You feel the need to just bow the knee. And sometimes it'll just get dead quiet. You ever been, I haven't even been in a service like that. Like you could take a butter knife and just cut the atmosphere and look out the hole because it's so thick. It's like a, you're like, what just happened in here? And no one can really explain it. It's the spirit of God. Now, if you, don't know, if you don't know that and you don't understand it, that would be the time you're like, I got to go to the bathroom. I got to go smoke a cigarette. I got to do something in there that's getting, I don't know. Right? He's drawing us to get to know him, to get acquainted with him, to get close to him with no fear. No fear. No, that's not cocky, like, oh, I'm not afraid of God. I'm not, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about there's a reverence and a respect of God that he's God and you're not, but he loves us. So he's my father and I can come and say, Dad, I messed up today, but here I am. I love you so much. Change my heart. And we can go right there. But if you are in control, that's not how it works. It's like, I'll go to church tonight. And then you come in and you're like, yeah, I know I'm jacked up in this area. Am I going to say nothing? We'll see if God points it out. We'll see, we'll see if he does something. Well, I didn't hear anything in the sermon. I didn't. And suddenly, it's all like you prove yourself to me. I'm pretty sure he did that 2,000 years ago. On the, I'm thinking, you know, think about it. I'm thinking that when they pulled his beard out and he was unrecognizable as a man, they beat him to a pulp and they put him on a tree pretty sure that might approve something. But we'll ask him to do it again. You know, I'll get to know you if you do that again. <laughs> no. We can't belittle what he already did. And churches all over America, including us at times, that's the spot we put God in. If we really want to be honest. Yeah? Because it's hard for us to even grasp the reality of what he did. No, we know what we've done. We get that. We're like, yeah, I won't talk about what I've done. But at the same time, to grasp the reality of what he did and get that to transfer over and begin to change our heart. There's a big, I've been to Grand Canyon. Sometimes there's a canyon there that it's, it's kind of like, I see you over there, 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 you know, and, and you're trying to get to know him 
and you feel like he's way over there. That's why the Bible says, draw nigh to me and I will draw nigh to you. Get close to me. So that's where praise and worship comes in with um, that fact. But here's the thing. A lot of the songs tonight were about forgiveness. I found that interesting. Uh, we talked about it a little bit beforehand. It's not like I come and I tell JP what songs to sing. The band prays about what songs to sing. And, um, and a lot of times that's, I mean, when they nail it, that's where the Spirit of God is going. And so there's something about forgiveness and getting to know him. So let's say I really want to get to know you, really like you, we're getting to know each other or whatever, but I sin against you or I sin. And that doesn't jive with where, who you are and your character. Just for me to sit next to him, I'm going to be really uncomfortable. Now, if he was not God, if you were God, you, I mean, you, that would just be like, mm, I'm just waiting for them to ask forgiveness. I just want to pour out my grace and my mercy. You know, that's the kind of thing. As a human, if you, if you know I wronged you in some way, you're going to be uncomfortable sitting next to me too. Because now we got something going on that we need fixed. God's not uncomfortable. He just can't embrace sin. He loves you. The behavior sucks. Right? There's a difference. Here's your behavior. Here's you. He doesn't have a problem with loving you. It's the behavior. Yeah. And... Then what we'll do is like, I know when I get to know him, I really want to impress him because that's, that's how many times we make friends. We're, we're like, see my car? You know, like, you know, people are just going to bond with you because you got this cool car or whatever it is. We find little childish ways to make friends. And sometimes we'll do that with God. Like we're going to come and we're going to impress him with something. And then he's really, I put a hundred bucks in the offering. <laughs> yeah, I can stand here feeling pretty good. He's my friend now. Whoa. Did he ask you to do that? Well, I wouldn't know because I don't know him. See? But we'll do that. And it's like, whew, that made my conscience feel better. Good. What if all he wanted you to give was 10? But you don't know because you haven't been listening to hear his voice because that would mean to get to know him. <sighs> yeah. In our society, uh, there's a study that's out right now that talks about... Um, when there's work involved, we, do, we will, depending on the amount of work to befriend somebody, we'll just opt out of the friendship because there's work involved. See, Little House on the Prairie Dog, you know, that's what I always call it, Little, little House on the Prairie Dog days. Um, people were friends. They, they needed each other. I mean, uh, my husband's from North Dakota, and we go through the different museums and, you know, of how, how people came out west and different things like that. And I mean, they could be miles apart. They got to walk to get somebody's help. Somebody's having a baby, something like that. I mean, the neighbors needed to know who lived where, what tree was closest to their house, how many paces, all that. And it's like, when you saw that neighbor, you embraced them. It's like, oh man, that's my neighbor. That might be your only neighbor. It was like, oh, we're now saying, ah, it's too much work. Nah, just go watch TV. I don't really need you. And that's the same thing our society is doing with God. I don't really need to go to church. I shoot up a prayer every once in a while. It's a lot of work. I mean, there's a lot of stress. <laughs> and we are in a stress-filled world. Um, we're not in the depression here, you know. We're we're not in North Korea in the death camps. Pretty sure we're not that stressed out. Um, but it feels like that. There's this, this limit that just says, ah, oh, that's too much. I don't want to have to work on this really. I was starting to get to know him, and then it just got too much. I just, I'm out. Think about it. If you do that, you're also doing that with God. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Yes, yes, you are. Because <laughs> it, it just comes natural to us, and we'll get close. And so you'll see this many times where people will be like, yeah, church is changing my life. It's been like three Sundays. Yeah. And I'm just, and that was a really cool guy I met. And then all of a sudden, I'm going to have to start getting involved. And it's just a lot of work. And there's gas money. I don't really like to dress up. 
And it will go down to like, "Ah, I don't need that. That's our society. And if you're not careful, you will get sucked right into that. And then when it says we're to get to know him, we'll just assume we do. And then a crisis will break out and we'll all come running to the altar to some God that we really don't understand. Yeah. I don't want to see that happen to anybody. But it will. And it does. Hurricanes, all kinds of stuff. People are like, oh, where is this God? Where? I don't know him. And then many times we'll turn away from any belief we do have because we know just enough to be dangerous but not enough to feel safe. And then we'll just be like, he's the one who did this. He gets to blame and we turn our back on him or out. All I'm doing tonight is showing you the program. Did you know the world has a program? Changes the program up. They're like, okay, in the 50s, this is our program that we're running. You know, 2000s, we've been running our program for a while. You know, it's a whole new program. It's cutting edge, cutting edge program. And, uh, <laughs> and, and that's what we're in. How we make friends and everything is this new cutting edge program. I want to go back to grace and love and mercy and getting to know a God that the world doesn't want to take the time and energy to get to know. So don't you know that will make you different than the, most, than the majority of people? You'll be different. Well, every day I, I just vow to be more and more different. I just want to be more and more different than this world. Because I don't want to be in the program. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if we were raised in daycare, I'm not cutting this down. I did 16 years of daycare. Um, if you were raised in, you know, soccer groups and all the different groups that you have and you kind of pull all that together and there's that, here we are running as a herd but Billy can be gone tomorrow, Chad can be gone, Steve's not here anymore, you know, whatever. And it's constant movement of people, but here's our herd and we're moving along. Do we, did we teach our kids to really get close to people? Our society has been moving so fast since the late 80s through the 90s where it's just like herd them together. Okay, now we're in this herd. Now we're going to be a part of an art herd and we're over here. And you get to know lots of people's names, but you don't really get to know them. And then what happens with kids is they lower their expectation of what intimacy looks like and they take that into their marriage. And, and then we see the, you know, the, hey, you know, we're having sex and we're, we're traveling and we're doing this. That's what a marriage is. Now, actually, marriage is a lot more intense than that. And it takes a whole lot of work. Well, I don't know. That's a lot of work. And then there's the God work, and then there's I'm supposed to love my neighbor work. There's a lot of work. Can't we just move somewhere and I just stay on the internet and disappear? That's the program. So my job is to make you aware of the programs here. Kind of ticks off the devil when I do it, and I'm happy to do it. I am happy to make this announcement. Yes. Um, this is a test, right? This life that we're going through checks our heart. It checks, you know, where we're at. Like, I, I don't even know if you, some of you are old enough to remember where it would go, ah, oh, I can't even make this sound, ah, on the TV. And they go, this is a test of the emergency broadcasting system. This is only a test. Well, I always think of that, you know, we are pilgrims passing through. The Bible says that we're like vapors here today, gone tomorrow. So we have this window of time to learn how to love What's your destiny? Get to know him and learn how to love. It doesn't matter if you're a doctor when you do it. It doesn't matter if you're a farmer when you do it. It doesn't really matter. That's what you, you, you do over here. But who you are is created in the image of God, which means as he loves, we're to love. In fact, the scripture says, as he is, so are we in this world. Well, that takes place and manifests itself as we get to know him. Otherwise, we are like the world. We're like little robots, all traveling together. This is what we do now. Somehow we like that, um, you know, uh, like I always say, the cow trail. 
You know, cows always go on that same trail, wears a thing, and uh, they can see where the trail is, and they get all in the water. If they're not on that trail, we like the cow trail. I think we need to dare to be a little bit different. To love like not happening around us. And when you dare to do that, you will get hurt. Then you'll be right in the heart of God. What? I thought Jesus bought me that kind of salvation, bought me away from that. Who are you to think you are higher than our master? Who loved and was destroyed on the cross, right? He asks us to love like he's loving, which means there better be some hang time, right? <laughs> like he hung on the cross, we need to have hang time for people. You know, when they hung on the cross, the, the way that they did that, you had to, some, some crucifixions were like this, some were not. With, your legs were kind of like this. And in order to breathe, you were stretched out and they'd be losing air. You had to push up from the bottom where that big spike was through. <gasps> Take a breath and then hang back down. You're in pain no matter which way you go, but you're desperate. So you're going to, you, can, you can only can do that so many times and then you're out of breath and you, and you die. Some relationships we talk about them like we've suffered like that. I called her and like she didn't return my call. And it's like been two days and I'm just, I'm like fed up. I can't, I just can't do this. This has been two days and I've been through these kind of relationships before and I'm not going to put the effort and time and if she doesn't come this way, then I'm not going that way. Oh yeah, you got hang time. <gasps> That's more like, I broke a nail. That's the kind of suffering. That's more in that category, right? Women will go drama. Most of the time, it'll be women that can go more drama and high, high emotions and all that kind of stuff. And guys will just check out. But either way, we've stopped loving. Guys will just go, well, I was in that box in my mind and that didn't work out, so I'm just going over here. That's a puzzle that needs to be worked. Yeah, but when I try to put the pieces together, it always turns out messy and upside down or whatever. Get back in there and work it again. Not on your own strength, but in his. Ask God, I need to get to know you because I don't know how to love this person, so I'm going to need to know you and how you deal with me, then that'll help me know how to deal with them. But if I don't get how you deal with me because I'm not giving you that, I surely will not know how to deal with them. And there goes your marriage. There goes the friendships. There goes your ability to be effective and to be a leader in this life. Yeah. It's called influence. The word influence, if you, if you look that word up, it actually talks about ethereal fluid, which is heavenly fluid, or like an anointing that comes from above. That's what influence is supposed to do. It's supposed to flow through us and be like a fluid out to other people. And they go, oh, yeah. But not because you were so amazing, because they felt God. They're like, I don't know what that guy's name was, but man, did you feel that? Ooh, there was something there. That's how he loves. He's just, whew, right? We don't know how to love like that. But he'll love people through us if we get to know him and we allow him to touch our heart. Then it's going to come over onto other people. But if we do it within our soul, then we'll come up with how, we, you know, this is, okay, so here's our relationship. So I want to make sure I don't get hurt. So this is how I'm going to love him. And we'll make the rules and everything around that. And when we set that into motion, it's really all about us. It isn't about him. Right? It's about me and me not getting hurt. But to have hang time, you're already being hurt, but you're going to love anyway. That takes work. And this is where churches will fill up to hear about what God's bought for them and empty out because we don't want to have to do that and that's too much work. And that would require loving other people and that's just too much. But then, it's Resurrection Sunday, we better get to church. And then we're back out again. And then, oh, it's Christmas, we better get to church. And we do that. That's, that's just religiosity. And it'll damn your soul to hell. Should I have said that prettier? It'll alter your ability to enter heavenly things. How about that? Did that sound nice? 
No, it'll damn your soul to hell. The word damn means to put a limit. And it'll limit you where you cannot go any further and it will take you into hellish things. So the reality is we're to get to know him and his forgiveness. That's the biggest part. And, and here's the thing. Here's the misconception. I don't always want to come to God constantly repenting of everything. Constantly repenting. That's what I do. I'm constantly repenting. Where are you like him? Right now, are you like him? Can you say, I am 100% like God? I mean, look at me. Not. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be something I need to repent of today. I mean, it's just better you deal with it as it comes. Like, like I can think of probably three times today already. Oh, sorry about that, Lord. Sorry. Sorry, I, that, that, was a, that wasn't good. I'm out. Wash me. Right? And if you get used to living like that, it's not this condemnatory thing where it's like, I'm never measuring up, I'm never measuring up. No, you have the wrong picture. The picture is, he is love, you're not. I want me some of that. Right? So how do I get that over on this? I'm going to have to get to know him. And as soon as I press up against him, I'm going to see my flaws. Because I don't measure up to love. I'm not always kind. Right? 1 Corinthians 13 talks about all kinds of characteristics of love. I'm not always like him. And so don't let condemnation push you out of the relationship. I do the best in relationships. Um, if somebody looks at, I'm going to just be blunt honest. If, if, if we're, we had a close friendship relationship, or even not even, we're starting to build that relationship, um, and all of a sudden I said something to you, and you said back to me, that really pissed me off. I would embrace that. I'd be, I'm like, really? What made you mad about that? Or whatever. But the whole like, hmm. And you back up, and you're like, no, I'm good. And the fake thing starts, and all that kind of stuff. Why do we do that? Why? Let's be honest, but speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. Now, maybe to some people, that really pissed me off, would, wouldn't feel like they were speaking in love. That's kind of my language. I mean, you could say that to me, and I would be like, oh, yeah, I get you. I get you. I get that. I made you mad about something. And so does that automatically mean no more relationship, we're done? That's actually the opportunity to pull in closer. Right? I don't know why, but you're irritating me right now. Oh, we're getting closer. <laughs> See? See? There's something to that. But I don't know, I don't know if it's sitcoms on TV or what has happened to our nation that we got this pussyfooting way of just this is relationship, and it's so fake and so weird. And we know it's fake and weird. That's why we want, don't want to put a lot of info, you know, because we're like, do I really want to play that role? <sighs> I did that in the last friendship where I was this person. Remember the word hypocrite? What it means? To play the part, to act the role as if in a play. Right? So if I'm going to have a relationship like that, I'm the hypocrite in it. And, and, and so, if I'm playing a certain role and you say, hey, that pissed me off, all of a sudden, oh, you've just disrupted my part. I can't, we can't do this anymore. I'm out. That was not the part I'm playing. I'm playing the nice girl who gets all the attention. And so, you just wrecked my role. So, I'm gone. <laughs> well, we quit being fake, then we don't have to worry about it. I apparently ticked him off. Maybe, that, maybe it's him, maybe it's me, but let's find out and then we'll get to know each other. Yeah. I want it to be that in life that I love to the degree that people are going to have to leave me that I never leave them. Like if you're going to go, it's on your own dime, your own anger, your own whatever. But even so, I'm still going, but I'm still here. Call me sometime. Love you. That's me. I had a lady one time, well, this is one time, this is all the time, <laughs> I mean, lots of times over the years, she's like, uh, when you pray for people, I can just tell you're into witchcraft. That's how she said it, witchcraft. I was like, really? So, you know, and you have that opportunity to be angry and, and, and those different things. But I really wanted to know 
why do you think that? Because I'm not trying to get rid of her, I'm still trying to get close to her. But if we go around emanating like, you hurt me, I'm getting rid of you, you hurt me, I'm getting rid of you, well, <laughs> you're going to get rid of a lot of people. Yeah? I just had a little altercation at the uh, gas station last weekend. And um, I was in a hurry. And no, it wasn't last weekend. It was last Tuesday. And I was at Holiday Gas Station. And there was a lady there, and she was pumping gas. And I was facing this way. Her car is in the middle section. Cars are lined up three, three deep, right? And she's behind me. I just all of a sudden had, I had my hand on the, the gas, or just going to take it out so I could turn and put it into my car. And all of a sudden, I just had this feeling to turn. And as I turn, gas is pouring out the bottom of her car. And she's just confidently just, you know, doing this. Stuff. And it's like pouring. By the time I had turned, it was half as big as her trunk underneath the car, right? Right where the muffler is. I mean, times mufflers and everything like that can cause a fire. Um, and so I'm like, ma'am, you need to shut that off right now. Because that's not the time to go, honey, could you, hello, my name's Mary, could you please shut the car, you know. And it was like, hey, and I look up and there's three kids in a Suburban right next to her and a lady with kids on this side. And I'm just like, mom alert went on, like this can't, this can't happen. And she turned to me and she's like, blank you. I used to work for Holiday. I know how to run these things. She goes even more. And by the time we had this little altercation, we were going back and forth. I said, you're taking the life of the people around you in your own hands. You need to stop now. Right? And so the lady next to me, she gets out of her car. She's like, do I move my car? I'm afraid to start my car. I said, go in. And we do all this stuff. But, um, but it was a look on her face was like, go to hell, right? And well, that was kind of what was coming out of her mouth too. <laughs> you may go to hell. And, and she couldn't, she didn't care that it was dropping out on the floor. And then at one point she takes a little handkerchief and goes like this on the side of her car and wipes a little bit of drool of gas there and closes it and goes in. And so I'm like, she's not getting in this car and starting it. So I told the lady next to me, she ain't going anywhere. So you better go call somebody, you know, and we arrange some things or whatever and I just stood by her car because I'm like you're not starting this up there's kids here other people hadn't seen it and yet later on that afternoon I had to go to the doctors after that and different things like that I thought about her and my heart ached for her and I thought that was kind of bizarre this is why, because I know my heart, right? Um, back in the day, I'd have slap kicked her one across the room. I'd be like, you want to throw me? You know, it would have been that kind of thing. You know, if you, this car is going nowhere and, and that type of stuff. But all of a sudden, there was this feeling of like, that's somebody's grandma. That's somebody's sister. That's why she didn't get this. If she didn't get it here, there's a good chance she's going to do it at another gas station. She could blow herself up. There's all these feelings of concern came, and I really knew that was not from me. That's because I look like that a lot of times to God. Like, I'm just like, screw you, I used to work here. <laughs> I'm part of this world. I know what's going on. Now, maybe I don't say that to him, but my body action really is, I don't, I don't care. I know what I'm doing. Right? And I will tell you right now, if I could find her and talk to her today, I would. And I would pull her close in. Just like God does to us. And for us. Doesn't he? Don't fear that with him. Don't fear that with him. Praise you, Lord Jesus. First Peter uh, chapter 2, verse 23 says, When he was reviled and insulted, he did not revile or offer insult in return. When he was abused and suffered, he made no threats, of vengeance, but he trusted himself and everything to uh, to him who judges fairly. 
See, at that moment, it's not like, you know what, you're hurting me, my feelings, and I'm going to take care. It's like, you know what, I just want to do what's right to protect these kids, but in the end, she's a person too. She needs help too. He personally bore our sins in his own body on the tree as on an altar and offered himself on it that we might die, cease to exist to sin and live in righteousness by his wounds you have been healed. For you were going astray like so many sheep, but now you have come back to the shepherd and guardian, the bishop of your souls. He's the bishop of our soul. He loves us. So what they talked about during praise and worship when it came to forgiveness, the word forgive means to send away. So what we do is, it's not like, this is what we see forgiveness. I'm a loser, so hopefully he's not mad anymore. <laughs> That's many times what we see forgiveness. No, forgiveness is like, oh man, uh, God, can you send this away? I just found something else. I, I was digging through this area of my heart and this is what came out of my mouth. Uh, can you send that away? That's really what we're saying. Forgive me. Send it away. It's a, in fact, one of the Greek meanings is a great sending away. So we shouldn't be condemned when we get to know him and we press in and we get close to him and something pops up inside of us. We go, whoa, I did not see that before. But since hanging out with you, it really got revealed. Could you send that away? Yes. See, the gospel is that simple. This is what we do, especially in full gospel circles. I don't know, I started pressing into God and this thing came up and I just felt like I need to take authority over the demon of the north of, you know, the, the demon that lurks from Chicago because I came through and it, I think it attached to my neck and I just bind it and I think that's why I'm having these evil thoughts and I don't know, it's just, I, I cast that out and I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I think I'm going to fast for like five days before this thing leaves me. Huh? Why do we do that? We should just go, holy cow. I had no idea. That trashy junk was hanging on me. Hey, God, can you send that away? I release it. And let it go. Yeah? Hmm. So a lot of times we're wearing ourselves out in a battle that's really not ours. He is the mighty warrior. We're supposed to just give it to him. Pfft. Send it away. See, demonic forces can't rest where there is no sin ground. Take the sin ground away, they got no right. So the first thing we should do is go, ah, ah I found it. Send it away. <laughs> can't touch this. Mm. You know what I mean? You can't. Because it's sent away. Do you see it? Let's stand. Hmm. Mm, I feel like I'm supposed to say this for somebody here tonight. Uh, I would normally draw this on the board, but a lot of you have heard me say this already, but there's somebody new who hasn't. Um, the way they have proven your synaptic nerves to run in your brain is if you believe something as true, even if it's a lie, you will grow synaptic nerves around that thing. So I've always used the example of you learned as a kid the sky is green. It's green. It's green. You look outside, it's green because that's your parents told you it was green. It's green. It's green. Well, once that has been fired many times, it'll grow around it this fatty tissue called the myelin uh, sheath. And that myelin sheath will protect that synaptic nerve as now this is true, that the sky is green. But then when you have a God awakening, a suddenly comes in your life and you're like, what? I just found out the sky is blue. I did not know that. Well, you'll run that one time and you'll go, I guess the sky is blue. And the area that where the myelin sheath is, it will actually, that fat of tissue, this is what happens inside your brain, will move down and try to kill that new synaptic nerve off. Because it's protecting this as truth and it's like, oh, no, no, you get out of here. It's green. 
And so what they've proven is people will dance between it's blue, it's green, it's blue, it's green. And then when they settle on it's blue, the war is on. Inside your physical body, the war is on. Because that myelin sheath will try to get down and atrophy that new pathway. So this is where we confess the truth over and over in area. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. So you say, this is what the truth is. The sky is blue. It's blue in the name of Jesus. It is blue. The word of God says it is blue. I'm just using this as a funny example. But, but what will happen is you'll use that new synaptic nerve more than you use the old one. And it will start to grow its own myelin sheath. Now the war is really on. Then it comes to the choice of your will to choose which one am I sticking with? That's your choice. I choose blue. I choose Jesus. I choose life that I might live. I choose his way, his answer, his love. And when you do that, the myelin sheath will get thicker around that new synaptic nerve that you've chosen, and the other one will atrophy and die. Not to the point you can't remember that you used to think it was green, but to the point it has no control over you. That process in the physical without a supernatural touch from God has been proven to take three and a half years. So if you're like, my, I'm a drug addict. And that's what you think. That's what you can feel. I'm a drug addict. I'm, a, I'm never going to free these drugs. This is what I'm at. Well, yeah, you got a big old myelin sheath around that puppy. So here now we're coming and we're choosing life down here. The war is on. But you know what, what the cool part is? When you get to know God, now you're pushing up against super on the natural. What I just described to you is totally natural. Naturally, your body will do that. Your soul will do that naturally. But when you add the supernatural component of your spirit, being in touch with God and being a new creature in Christ, and all of a sudden you're like, and the breath of God blows on, it speeds that process up. Yeah? That's called getting to know him and establishing your relationship. So, Father, we just come before you in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for an establishment of relationship. And that's done by the Spirit of God through Jesus to you. And we submit ourselves, therefore, to you, Lord God. We come under your mission, your will, and your ways. We want to get to know you. You ever say that out your mouth? Because if you've never said it out your mouth, I mean, you can have said what they call the sinner's prayer, or all kinds of different prayers. But if you want to get to know him, you have to verbalize that. And the reason though our mouth won't open and say it is there's a whole big fat myelin sheath going, don't say that. I mean, you can live for God, but don't say that. Don't say that. So that's why we have to do completely opposite. That's why many times we get radical. We come over and we go, yep, I chose Jesus. He's the way, the truth, the life. No man can come unto the Father except through him. He is my Savior. See, and we can do that because I'm already looking at like that fat boy in my brain. <laughs> that myelon sheath. You're going down. You are going to atrophy and die. I'm growing new synaptic nerves. My soul is going to follow my spirit. I don't, you know, otherwise we're like, and they, I just keep getting these plaguing thoughts. I just wish God would help me. I keep coming to church. You can keep coming to church, that's good. But getting to know him means I heard it, I embraced it, I apply it. I heard it, I embrace it, I apply it. This myelin sheath is going down. This synaptic nerve is going to dry up. I'm going with a whole new renewed mind. Yeah? So, it, let's just close our eyes and help ourselves out here. Uh, I don't need that kind of help, but if you need that kind of help, close your eyes and just begin to verbalize, I want to know you. I want to get to know you, God. I want to get to know what your names mean. Lord, I know one of your names means Jehovah, the God of covenant. Your name means Jehovah Sabaoth, the God of war and the appointed time. You are El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God. You are the God who's more than enough. You are here, Lord God, as Savior. Ah, thank you. I want to get to know you. I want to get to know every aspect of your character. I want to see how you love. And wherever, wherever we don't match up to that love, can you send that away? Yes, you can. 
Go ahead. Send it away, Lord God, right now. Send it away. Wherever we fall short, send it away. We ask forgiveness. Send it away. In Jesus' name. Amen. So hopefully that simplified a little bit of the gospel and the, the war that goes on inside of you. Because the war is real. The war is on. If you learned you were ugly when you were a kid, now try to change that when you look in the mirror. Now, no, you're not. Everything inside of you goes, yes, you are. And so you can't argue with you. You can't take your information and argue with that information because nobody wins. You have to go to the super on the natural to speak to that. Uh, but God said... Now that's a whole new pathway. I hope you have a blessed week. Be sure to take some of the flyers out on the table so you know what times uh, things are canceled or things are going on. Bless you.